Hello and welcome to the back nine of round number three here at the 2019 Las Vegas Challenge presented by Innova Champion Disc. We're on the Innova Factory Store course. We're taking in all the action. So we're here on hole number 10, 378 feet with plenty of OB water on that right side, a daunting tee shot. You have to make sure you have just the right amount of control. Jennifer Allen finished out the front nine with a birdie on hole nine. That's pushed her to three over par on the tournament. And just playing that power hyzer shot, putting herself out there safely. I feel like if you walk away with a birdie here, that's great, but you need to at least secure the par. Don't make any unforced errors. Walking away with a par is perfectly fine here. A little spoiler alert, I believe Andrew Presnell aces this a few hours after the women have come through and played this. Not sure it's such a spoiler at this point. This comes in as the ninth most, most difficult, averaging 3.19 for the women's division. Also out in the center as we take a look, a little bit short as we pan back to the basket. I want to thank Kyle, who's on the catch camera. Kyle Webster, who's out there killing it in the afternoons, shooting 1,000-plus rated golf, trying to climb himself up the leaderboard as well. I want to thank Central Coast for the assist on the drone previews. Those guys doing great work as Cy puts it right next to the pin. Solid run by Vanessa. Pro tip, folks, if you're going to can a long putt like that or get an ace, don't generally just kind of meander into the camera view because then I'm not going to get your amazing shot. And Vanessa with authority. And I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not about to start yelling at her players. But it is funny how sometimes you can set up in just the right spot and uh, whether they're watching the disc or it's just a natural movement, a lot of players will kind of just drift left or right and sometimes therefore preventing us from capturing the full shot. But plenty of pars. There were actually zero birdies relinquished on hole 10 in the FBO division. Full 11, a par 4, 565 feet. This parallels the previous hole of course, it's a little bit longer. They just played the opposite direction for playing 10. Now they're heading back here on 11. And Jen's pushing off to that left side. Not really in danger, so to speak, of finding any OB there. I do feel like the one mistake to make uh, that you don't want to make is to find that water on the right side. Bail out, do whatever you need to do, lay up, call it what you will, but you just don't pull it to the right. What a gorgeous backdrop. <laughs> it's as if she could read my mind. She was exactly right. That's not what to do. She pulled that one off to the right and found herself out in the middle of the water. So she's going to get a penalty stroke and then have to get a placement as to where she was last in bounds. That's a really good looking shot there by Vanessa. Oh, and had that stayed clean, I think it had the right speed. So I believe I actually had to backtrack at this point because they gave her a spot from where she was last in bounds, and it was quite a ways back. And that one turns over on her. She gets the green flag, and she's safe. Get over there, Les. 
Jen just going to try and take everything out of play. Go with a big spike. Heiser, and what a shot. Four, forehand trickery there by Sai. Quite effective. All 11 here averaged 4.06 out of the 31 women's division. Vanessa's very aggressive putt is now going to leave her with an awkward stance on the comeback and running into a few problems here. Size able to salvage a bogey after going OB and, and moving quite a ways back on the fairway. Meanwhile, Jen Allen is going to push herself to just two over par overall, having a very solid round here. Hole 12, 937 feet, a par 5, and I believe the single longest hole that will get played this weekend. Of any of the three courses, this is the longest, I believe. Not a lot of danger. It does very slowly sweep from left to right overall, but nearly a 1,000 feet. We'll see if... Jen Allen can take advantage of the distance that she has. And just trying to play that one out in the middle of the fairway. And I think that's all you're trying to do here. Make sure you don't pinch yourself up left or right. Find any of the trees or the shrubs. Just want to keep it in the middle. And that almost looks like it's flirting with that right side, but great result. The women talked quite a bit about being in a good, fun card, really enjoyed each other's company. I know there was a lot of conversation about that throughout the first couple of rounds as well. Anytime the women feel like they're really gelling together, even if you're not maybe necessarily playing your best golf, uh, out there with a smile on your face and having fun is certainly key. And I feel like uh, there was even a lot of conversa outward conversation about that very topic throughout the weekend, which was awesome to see and Cy does Find that right hand tree. And then also coming in as the ninth most difficult, this is averaging 5.19 as an average for the women's field. So playing a little bit over par. And I think a theme throughout the weekend is that it just comes up short of the geese. Uh, use that ground play. You know, a lot of this ground is, you know, either dead or dormant, uh, somewhat hard or compacted. Uh, if you're using the right angles, you can certainly get a, a few extra feet on the skips after they've already landed. Uh, of course, you have to take that into consideration when you're trying to be a little bit more delicate and place a shot exactly where you need it. <laughs> and Jen with a little trickery of her own skips out of the <laughs> hazard the sand bunker so she goes into it and then skips right back out of it and she is safe and that's her second shot and she's quite a ways ahead of everyone else at this point in terms of her overall placement she's about the same distance we find where Sai is after her third shot Nice and easy, right up the middle. Just don't give any strokes away. That's, that's the advice here on this long par five. Let's see if that turns over. Just a bit too stable, but again, not punishing. And take note of Jen as she has a standstill approach for her third shot. 
Sai very close to her, throwing her fourth. A beautiful forehand flick there by Callie. Something else our competitors have had to deal with, the weather conditions. I know I talked, oh yeah, I could quit talking. What, what a birdie. Jen Allen taking it down in four. But as I was saying, uh, the, just thinking about all the different layers that you do or don't need, starting out the morning in the 30s or maybe in the low 40s, uh, we're seeing some sunshine finally, but uh, being a little bit restricted. Some of these jackets, whether they're uh, sweatshirts or jackets, you have to think about that when you're prepping for a tournament as to what you're going to wear or what's the worst and best case scenario for your attire and how comfortable are you playing in that. I want to make sure that you're not restricted, but yet you're, uh, of course, keeping yourself warm and ready to go. So as she taps in for the par, we see the lone birdie by Jennifer Allen, very impressive. There were actually five birdies out of the entire field back there on hole number 12. So here's 13, you find a OB green on the left and also a hazard directly in front of the basket. 453 feet uphill, so probably plays closer to about 480, maybe 490. have to assume that there's very few birdies here. Keeping that in mind, I think a par would be more than adequate. This comes in as the fifth most difficult. Plenty short of the green. Light breeze that will be at their backs as they're throwing their tee shots here. Plenty of divisions both on the national tour and the A tier side here at the Las Vegas Challenge. Let me know in the comments if you think you're going to find your way out here to Las Vegas. Don't let this weather of this weekend uh, paint the full picture. As I arrived late Wednesday night, there was snow on the ground and on cars. Someone said it was the first time in like a decade they had gotten this much snow. So certainly don't let that uh, chase you off. But I'd like to know, Vegas, Memorial, any of those events, do you see those in your future as you move into 2020? Of course you have my recommendation to make sure that you get out to the southwest but i'd like to know and if you're not if you're not planning on it why not why are you not in vegas that's what i'd love to know solid approach shot there by jen who's just trying to keep things clean she's done a very good job of that thus far Oh, that left side just not working. We can get that a little bit more center and Jen loves the stress-free par. And for those wondering, this is about 15, maybe 20 minutes off of the strip. I know I was just talking up Vegas, maybe the the uh, glitz and glamour and madness that you find in Las Vegas, or at least on the Strip, isn't your thing. Well, this is about 15 to 20 minutes off of that as we move over to hole number 14. 441 feet uh, with a green very close to the basket. 13 relinquished zero birdies to the entire field. We'll see if that can change or be different on 14. I feel like they have similar difficulty though. 14 comes in as the second most difficult hole on the entire course. Oh. 
out in the middle. Good shot. Might sound a little bit repetitive, but there, I feel like there's just so many holes out here where the best offense is just really solid defense, meaning just throw a good shot, put it out there, and then walk away with a, a relatively easy par, a stress-free par. That's what I think uh, will do very well throughout this entire weekend. And size is done just that as well. So she's out in the middle, uh, almost a little bit of a slow-mo replay there for you, letting it land twice. Seen Callie very proficient with both backhand and forehand approach shots. I have to assume it's just the angle in which she's trying to come in will dictate which one that she uses because I've seen them both. And Sai realizes a little bit too much mustard on that one. Jen had a really good drive to get things going there. Uh, looked like she was maybe a little bit tentative to even try and run that. She does have it low and in a little bowl-like area and Sai with a huge putt to save her par. So somewhat surprised to not see a more aggressive run there by Jen a moment ago. However, if you're feeling it and things are working, don't mess with it. She's had a very clean round here. We're looking at the first 14 holes, just four left to play. And Callie's gonna go to a knee and outstretch to her left. And that's a putt you just have to practice. Uh, as she converted there, that's a little pro tip for you. Some people don't ever think about it until you're actually in a tournament and sitting there squaring that one up and it feels weird. Go out and practice it. Make up some games. Putt around picnic tables or other obstacles. Make sure you're comfortable with those kneeling putts. As we're looking at 15 downhill, 367. This play is very similar, I feel like, to hole number one. I feel like it's very attackable. And Jen puts herself almost pin high. There is probably a little bit more danger here that you can find on both the right and the left sides, but this hole is, I feel like, very attackable. I think the easy mistake for anyone to make is to throw it a little bit low, as we just saw, by Vanessa, because you're really just trying to keep all the cart pass and other out-of-bounds out of play. So sometimes you may overcompensate, and or you could play a skip off the OB cart path. That's a great shot that'll work for us. She's on the left side, a little bit short. We'll see if that tree obstructs her view at all. And Sai, who's had no problem keeping it low. Doing just that. Ah, I think hers was going to be so much closer, but she got caught up on that tree just before where Callie's is. And yep, out of somewhere in that shrub, we see Vanessa Van Dyken. Really good blind approach shot for her. So from a knee, outstretched to her left yet again, just like we saw from the previous hole. <laughs> Except for this one, two or three times the distance. Great birdie. And Jen's going to follow suit. She'll take a birdie. Hole 15, 12th most difficult, averaging 3.16. So it's certainly saying something about the course and the challenges out here. It is considered the sixth easiest hole, but it still is averaging 0.16 over par. I'm not a stats guy, but that sounds relatively challenging. And we see the bogey by Cy and the par by Vanessa. Meanwhile, Jen and Callie both with the birdies. 
as we move over to hole 16, 723 feet. You really want to land right about there. Uh, you're looking to get around the bend, and that will give you a look possibly at this basket, which is of course up on, on the side of a hill or a little bit on a mound. But making the corner is key here, or at least putting yourself out in the open. And Jen, way back on the tee, happy. She knew that came in with a, a very less than ideal angle, I'll say, a dangerous angle. And somehow that just stuck right there for her. It looked like it could have easily skipped up and found herself over the cart path. Kelly safer and out in the middle. Sai lining up and she needs that really to push right. And the angle allowed for that to basically skip straight. That could have cut, rolled, and possibly found the OB. Vanessa's really just looking for position at this point. Uh, she's not really far enough off of her drive to possibly attack that pin. So I feel like she's just looking for a good position, trying to get up and down, walk away with the par. And Callie not able to clear that green as well as they're throwing uphill. So she also just trying to put herself in position. See if Sai can do the same. And I kind of feel like there's a theme here. Jen, who got much further up. She's going to try and take full advantage. She clears the tree. Oh, yeah. Putting herself up on the dance floor here on hole 16. Nice, solid forehand approach. We've seen plenty of those from her. Thank you. As we're watching the ap approaches here on 16, I just have to thank all the amazing supporters and sponsors. As Jen keeps the train rolling, taking the birdie. She's going to pick up a stroke at least on the rest of the card here. In of a champion dish, your events presenting sponsor, the PDGA, of course, involved as this is the opener for the national tour here in 2019. And Throw Pink also supporting the coverage. Please check them out at throwpink.com. We're going to move over to hole 17. This one plays straight up the middle, 295 feet. One of the shorter holes on the course, but certainly not one of the easiest. In fact, it comes in as the fifth most difficult. And I'm glad I was on the tee for this because Jen Allen goes up and over. And I'm not sure a lot of other women are going to be taking that route. In fact, Kyle, who was trying to get the catch... Uh, didn't necessarily anticipate that, so he never saw that one come down, understandably, as he wasn't expecting that angle, and it was a little more of a traditional route right up the middle. I think we're going to see that by the rest of the women. Catching a tree is Vanessa. Sai also catches one of the trees. So you see just the advantage that Jennifer had uh, by playing way out and around and trying to take all of this, this gauntlet, so to speak, out of play whatsoever. Uh, fortunately for Jennifer, though, she has that power. 
can't say that a lot of the other women in the division just have such raw power that they could try and even attempt that route. Jen just trying to keep things clean as we're watching Vanessa with a great patent pending, putting herself right next to the pin. That shot, I, I can't say enough about how difficult that shot was. Back to the pin with the backhand outstretched and then a light turnover to have it come in nice and flat. That was a high level shot there by Vanessa. And here's Jen who gives it a good run. Sai attempting to save her par there. I can tell you just two women in the entire field were able to take birdies here. Paige Pierce and Nicole Johnson, the only two women that were able to capitalize and take a birdie here on hole 17. So proving just how tough it is. Average 3.39 and just three birdies, correction, two birdies, I should say, in the entire field. Moving on to hole number 18, the finishing hole here on the Innova Factory course. Thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed it. Tried to give you a little solo commentary, but also let a lot of the play do the talking. And Jennifer Allen, certainly the story here as she has just been crushing it out here. 573 feet, this par four. And playing out two well, that spot is pretty much what you want to do. It's a placement shot and your approach shot being the more difficult of the two. Nice shot. Thank you. And that's also a really good shot. Looked like Vanessa maybe had a unfavorable release or something she wasn't looking for, but the end result was was great. Vanessa has two bogeys and a birdie up into this point. Meanwhile, Jennifer Allen has six birdies and no blemishes on her scorecard whatsoever. So a very solid round by her. As both her and Vanessa both started the day at plus five. And Vanessa just barely gets over the green. She's on the fringe, which is in bounds. Masters player extraordinaire and caddy and tour partner. See Jay Ray, Jonathan Ray helping out. As he was hustling around, playing and caddying throughout the weekend. And giving all the right tips there. Sai also parking it. So Jen, who has played so well, you know she's thinking about how good her score has been. She's just trying to close this out. Needs to get up and over the out of bounds. The green and she's done so. Very nice. So what I'd like to hear, oh ho ho ho. Vanessa, I like to hear those chains as she closes out with a birdie. Uh, with the weather conditions, I'd like to hear, would you rather play in cold weather or would you rather play in high winds? Assuming those are two totally separate things, cold weather or high winds, leave that in the comment and I'll have a giveaway as Jen looking to go, uh, looking to go seven under bogey free. She remains bogey free, but misses that one. That's a par. I catch up with her in her hot round. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining. We'll see you guys for round four. Here's Jen.
I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. I've caught up with Jen Allen After again. Amazing putt. Hey, I wasn't going to lead <laughs> with gonna, that putt on 18. That was all you. Let's skip that because okay. it doesn't matter. Okay. You shoot the hottest round out here. You again are on my card, but you're going to jump leapfrog up to the lead card. Awesome to see. No, I tell, only play good with you. Well, all right. Well, tell everyone how do you feel about that round today? Um, it felt really good. I'm, I've always said it. I play good with positive people, and I get in there, and I, when I play relaxed, it's, it's when I play my best golf. So I, again, just tried to go out there, good card mates, um, have fun, play my game, relax, um, try not to put the pressure on myself, because when I do, I do cool things. Well, um, you, I'm going to say... You took advantage of your distance out there in a few holes. The par five comes to mind and a few of the other par fours. You really took advantage of that. You capitalized on that. Uh, are you, you looking forward to uh, maybe doing a little more of that tomorrow? I think I let anybody get into my head too much. Um, for some reason, I feel like the other two courses really don't have OB to me, not, not as much, clearly. And I think I just always try to play so safe and I change my game when I get on Innova and I let the OB get in my head a little bit too much. When I try hard, I screw things up. So if I can get out there and not try okay. and just have fun, then maybe good things will happen. But um, i got to go work on some putting, I think. All right. Well, we're going to let you go. It's been a great day out here. Of course, I want to thank the PDGA and everyone else that's involved, along with Innova and Throw Pink as your coverage support sponsors here this weekend. Uh, Disc Baron and, and Lucky Disc Golf, so many people always supporting it. We appreciate it. This is Jen Allen. She's moving on to that lead card. We'll see if she can do more of that <laughs> magic here in Vegas tomorrow.